Oh man, I'm still getting that black line. Alright, I think that's it. I hope that's it. I just might cry if it's not. Hey friends, right. thanks so much for tuning into my channel. If you're a first time viewer, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. So today's video is just an opportunity for me to share with you my one verse, one month, one year passage that I'm studying for the month of September. If you follow me on Instagram, you have seen me share what passage or verse of scripture in the Bible I'm focusing on for each particular month. I think I started posting them in March. I want to say I started in March, either February or March. And I issued a challenge to you to begin memorizing or to any up on memorizing scripture um, and getting, you know, God's word hidden in your heart so that you know it word for word, studying it so that you know what the author intended to say and how it applies to your life. So for the month of September, I'm in the book of Ephesians. So I'm in Ephesians 1, 15 through 23. So let's read it. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named not only in this age but also in the one to come and he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him who fills all in all and so i wanted to share just a thought um, from that passage um the author of this book, Timothy Keller, points out that um, this prayer that Paul was praying for the church, he points out that his focus was not necessarily on asking God for things for them. His prayer was that they would know God. His prayer was that they would um, know his love, that their hearts would be enlightened, that the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened as well. And so that's just been kind of a thought um, for me, especially in that um, kind of that struggle that I deal with sometimes, and I'm sure many of you probably do too, between being consistent in prayer and keeping the faith, I guess, um, and still believing that God is going to work out certain situations um, in my life. A lot of times that's, that's a challenge for me. Not because I don't believe in God, because I do. Um, not because I don't believe God loves me, because I do. But oftentimes, the challenge is really all about my understanding. Me not understanding sometimes why God allows things to go the way they go. Uh, me not understanding sometimes how things are going to work out. Knowing that they're going to work out. But me not understanding sometimes how God is going to work things out and then... Just that thought process can bring on discouragement. But um, I was reminded through studying this passage and through um, reading um, this book on prayer that God's priority is not to give me what I want. Although God does love me and according to the scripture, um, he doesn't withhold any good thing from his children. But good in my eyes and good in God's eyes are often totally different. Simply because, you know, God's thoughts towards us are based upon his divine will and perfect plan and his sovereignty. He knows all. He sees all. From the beginning on until the end, he knows everything. And so God's perspective is much more um, all-encompassing than mine is. My perspective is based on my past. Um, my perspective is based on what I see now and what I hope for in the future. But God sees it all together. And so 
he understands what he's doing in my life. And it is um, a commandment and a privilege for me as a believer to pray, to consult God about my life, to um, seek to know God for who he is, and to surrender my thinking, my plans, um, myself to him through prayer and through study of the scripture. And so um, it was just encouraging to read how Paul prayed for the church back then. Um, not that he wasn't concerned about people uh, being cared for because there are many places in the scripture where um, it's addressed how the body of Christ was to interact with each other to make sure that everyone's needs were met. Um, so people's needs being met were concerned then and they're concerned now. Uh, the things that concern you, your everyday life, God is concerned about. Um, the Bible also tells us that he's not far removed from how we feel. God knows how we feel as well. But ultimately, he wants us to know him. There's nothing more fulfilling that we will experience in this life or the one to come than knowing God. And, it's hard. and so what I want to do now is just share a quote that just really encouraged and inspired me in this space in my life from the book. It says, we are not called to choose between a Christian life based on truth and doctrine or a life filled with spiritual power and experience. They go together. I was not being called to leave behind my theology and launch out to look for something more for experience. Rather, I was meant to ask the Holy Spirit to help me experience my theology. And that is just like, it's really encouraging to me in this time frame. Because um, I felt like, you know, I've kind of gone through a metamorphosis of sorts over the past three or four years as it relates to my theology. What I believe and why. Um, how I read and understand the Bible. That's, that's gone through an overhaul over the past couple of years. Um, it was just nice to read that particular quote because that really um, summarizes um, the life that we're supposed to live, what we're supposed to be seeking after. We are supposed to be seeking after the heart of God, um, but there's nothing wrong with being able to see his work in our lives. And sometimes that means there's a drastic change in our situation, but sometimes that means we just begin to have a different perspective and we're able to um, see things a little bit closer to the way God sees them and we see his work in our lives maybe not necessarily in the way that uh, we may have initially asked for so I hope that you're encouraged to really know him um, in a in a new in a fresh in a deeper way that's my desire for me and that's my prayer for you and I hope that you have been um, diving into the scripture yourself and I'd love for you to share with me what passage you're studying in the comment section below. Um, make sure you are subscribed to my channel. Tap that notification bell so that you will receive a notification every time I release a new video. And give this video a thumbs up. Share it with a friend. Chit chat with your people. You know what you're studying what you're getting out of it um, you just never know how much sharing a verse um, and what God is doing in you with someone else um, can be a blessing to them I hope you are enjoying your time with God in the year of 2017 as we are in the last quarter of it um, happy fall to you make sure you subscribe and I look forward to seeing you in my next video